I'm going to paint a birch tree using clipping masks. Hi everyone, Steve Elliott here again. Today I'm working in Procreate and I'm going to use one of the new features, the clipping masks, to show you how to paint uh, birch trees really quick. Uh, so this is the actual painting of the birch tree uh, uh, trunk, I suppose, is the main thing because that's the main feature of the birch tree. Is only going to take like a couple of minutes and the rest of the video is is done uh, painting the rest of the scene but i thought uh, it would be a nice idea so i'm using my own watercolor brushes and i'm using the uh, wash brushes and the eraser there to just smooth off uh, the bottom of a, an edge and i'm using lots of layers on this one generally with watercolor um, I I do use lots of layers. I, every time I paint a new object, I create a new layer because that's how watercolour works. It's all about putting translucent colours on top of translucent colours. So I'm sort of getting in the bushes here. You can see that was on a different layer because I was able to move that very easy. Just to let that little bit of feel uh, be apparent there. And uh, I'm using the erase again. Just to, uh, I've got an eraser watercolor brush. I've got a lifting out brush and so on and so forth. I generally use the lifting out brushes on the eraser. <clears throat> and I'm just using the eraser here to put in this fence before I start getting into the actual birch trees. So I'm sort of setting the scene at the moment to, um, where I want to go with, with the trees. This was again a photo I took. Uh, on one of my early morning walks, took it this morning. Autumn's definitely, you know, fading away and we're moving into winter. Uh, the colours are diminishing. But uh, the photo doesn't really do it justice. I was just walking along this road and just saw this little group of birch trees. And I thought, oh, that would make a really nice study. So it, now, this is the bit that I want to sort of tell you about. What I'm doing, I'm painting in the trunks of the trees, okay? And I'm just using a dark colour. So I'm using a brown there and I'm thickening up those trees. And this is all on a separate layer. So you need to create a new layer. And then I created another layer above that and I set it to masking layer. And what that means, though, I can now paint in the light parts of the bark and I can just sort of scribble them in really, really quick. And it doesn't go out of that brown boundary of the tree trunk. I change the color there slightly. So that is the trick. That, that's all I'm doing for the birch trees. I made this clip layer above the um, layer that I painted in the trees and then painted in those light bits. And that was as simple as that. And I, I guess I could have used that uh, a lot more perhaps in the painting but I did just restrict it to those birch trees and I go back in again in a little bit and uh, think them up those trees a little bit more and because I'd already painted in those white uh, parts of the bark when I went back into the layer with the brown on and painted over that it just exposed more of the white or light color that I'd already painted so it was really easy for me to edit it and um, just go back into it and, and make those trunks thicker. So masking layer, I really do like it. Um, I think I will be using it a lot more. I can see lots of ways I can be incorporating this into a painting. So as you can see, I'm sort of adding layers all the time, shuffling about. Now I've created a new layer for these uh, branches that are hanging off the trunks. And I'm using, so I'm mixing it up between blues and browns. So I'm kind of working with a, a limited palette that um, could be used for autumn colors. I guess you would say I'm using sort of ultramarine blue and burnt umber if you was picking watercolor paints and maybe a little bit of burnt sienna in there and using that as a palette and a little bit of, um, what green would that be? Uh, Ucker's green or something like that. If I was going to, use. so there you see, look, I'm adding this brown again into these trunks and the whites appearing miraculously. 
because I'm working on the layer uh, below the clipping mask. Then I go back in and add some more twigs. So it became really easy to edit this um, painting and edit those trunks just uh, so quickly without uh, fiddling or having to be meticulous about the white. It just did not go out of that boundary. So I'm painting in some twigs, but I want, well, branches. Let's call these branches. I'm painting in those branches. And what I'm going to want to do uh, in a short while is add some twigs. So uh, I'm using an eraser just to sort of clean up the edges, first of all, of those branches. And there we go. Now I'm putting in the twigs. And I'm just using um, a wash brush and adding in a sort of a, a very light, well, it's, it's a dark colour, but I've got the opacity quite low to add in these twigs. So it's just sort of a glaze, a, a wetting wet. Imagine I've wet the paper and then just brushing colour on and it diffusing out to put those twigs in. And then I'm going in with some darker oranges for those leaves that are at the bottom of the tree and um, putting some shadow under those with a darker brown. And then using the blending brush to sort of smear them all together and blend them together. And I'm painting these over the top of the uh, birch tree trunks to sort of uh, put them in front. Uh, so give you the impression that they are sitting in front of, front of those uh, trunks and its leaves coming off the trees. And I'm going in with a, uh, a brown just to add in some of these other leaves that you can see. Uh, on the photo so um, I was really pleased the way this came together uh, it took me about 45 minutes from start to finish for the old painting so not too long I'm just sort of going in with a, a few more darks and then I decided it would be nice just to add a little bit of colour to that gate or fenceway there I, I don't know if it's a if it's a gate or if it's a broken fence or what it is Again, with a few more twigs, painting them in, just varying the colour a little bit with some blues and some browns. I'm using the rigger brush for that. And at this point, um, I'm beginning to think that I've got a finished painting. And um, <clears throat> I go in, I'm sure I'm going to sign it. There we are, and I sign it. But I looked at it and I thought, mm, yeah, it's not quite right. I need a little bit more work. So I create a new layer. Oh, no. First of all, I import a textured paper. So I put that on the top of the stack and uh, make the mode multiply and just change the opacity a little bit just to add a little bit of texture to give that that watercolour look. Then what I do, I start painting in some highlights of the leaves to the right of the trees, just on that bush. I thought that was sort of... Um, it needed that to frame the trees a little bit. And then I'll, on the right hand side, I'm going to do a similar thing, except instead of working with lighter colours, I go in with a darker palette. But basically what I did, I just sampled the green colour and then went into the colour mixer and uh, changed the um, not the saturation. I changed the uh, depth of it so it was a lot lighter. So it became a tint instead of um, a dark colour. And this I did the opposite. I sort of selected the colour and then made the shade. That's what I tried to change. The word I'm looking for is shade. I, I changed the shade so it was darker. And then uh, sort of painted over that with some lighter twigs. So that is it. That is my finished painting of birch trees using the clipping mask. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a big thumbs up as always is much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because I have lots of videos like this and I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.